next guest into the studio, Dr. John Friedman. Thank you for taking the time Thank you so much. to come down the hill from Brown University, Associate Professor of Economics, International and Public Affairs at Brown. Gave a big talk this week on some big research. I keep using big because this is opportunity in America, improving intergenerational mobility with big data. So this is really looking at how data can impact the socioeconomic futures of from one generation to the next. How, how does data do that? Sure. Well, I think what we've seen in America is that people all over the place feel like they are struggling for opportunity, that people in all sorts of backgrounds find that it's harder and harder to get ahead. And when you look at the data, you look at the rates at which children from different backgrounds uh, grow up and earn different things. For instance, the fraction of children who grow up to earn more than their parents did mm -hmm. has fallen from about 90% for kids born in, uh, during World War II to just 50% for kids born in 1980. So that's an enormous drop. And I think what we want to do is try to use the data to help figure out, first of all, what's going on. And then I think maybe more importantly, what can we do to fix that? So what are the particular data points that you're looking at as you're collecting a data's, you know, there's so many areas I'm sure you're looking at, but what are the ones in particular and how many are you looking at? Sure. So I think what the beauty of this research is, is that we can study uh, the entire population of the country. And that's very important because it means that we can not just get a picture of what's going on nationally, but how things differ between different cities, between different genders, between people in uh, different socioeconomic groups. And what you see is that uh, there's incredibly different things going on all across the US. So what we do is we see people and we try to follow them through from where they grew up to what they do when they go to college or uh, what they're earning when they're in their 30s. And that paints a really rich picture of opportunity in the US. And for instance, what you find is that just to pick one statistic, take the fraction of poor kids that grow up to themselves reach the top of the income distribution, kind of a, a bottom to top success story. Ask what fraction of poor kids in each city get that opportunity. Well, in some cities in the country, it's as low as 4%. And in other cities in the country, it's three or four times higher up at you know, 13, 15%. And so then we want to ask, well, what's going on in those different places? What seems to account for the fact that there's so much more opportunity in some places than others? And what can we do to fix that? So you're working on this research at Brown. How big is your team looking at all of these data points? Yeah, we have about 20 people on the team. And we're always expanding because uh, working with all that data takes a lot of work. And so it's a, it's a big effort. And you had the talk at Watson this week. So talk with us a little bit about that. As we're sitting here talking, I'm sure you extrapolated a little bit more on this. What was that talk at Watson like? Sure. So I was trying to talk about how we can use these data to really reach out and help policymakers think about what they can do in their own state or city to improve opportunity. And I think the real key comes from the ability to use the data to really get very specific. Right, Saying that opportunity is higher in Minneapolis than Providence, that's just not super helpful because, you know, Why? <laughs> telling, well, telling, the, you know, telling Mayor Lorza that we should just be more like Minneapolis, <laughs> I think it's just, it's just not an actionable suggestion. And so what I was talking about was various ways that you can get even more fine than that. You can say which neighborhoods in Providence seem to be better or worse. Are there neighborhoods where there's a lot of opportunity, but it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to live? Are there certain populations that seem to be doing better than others? Even are there particular ages where people seem to be able to get further ahead or fall further behind than others? And that really helps to uh, locate exactly the part of kids' lives or the parts of cities where investment is really necessary. So how often do you sort of put all of this information in a, in a package with a bow and, and deliver it? Because you're, you're constantly collecting this information. I mean, how often are you presenting it to stakeholders in a, sort of the digestible package that might be of use to them? Yeah, so we try, one of the real hallmarks of what we try to do as researchers is not just do a bunch of analysis ourselves, but put a bunch of data together and put it on the web so that people can use it. Mm. And so uh, we're actually going to have a big data release coming up in about two months where people can uh, take the type of thing I was uh, talking about at Watson on Wednesday and look at it on your computer. It'll be like Google Maps for Opportunity in America. And so that's coming out in a couple months? It's coming out right at the beginning of May. Okay, very interesting. And so talk with us, what was the reception when you had Q&A afterwards? Mm -hmm. You're at Watson, you give, it's like, you know, you're in academia, it's, you give the lecture, you get a response. What did folks want to know following the delivery of this, uh, your speech? Sure, well, you know, I think that what was very encouraging to me is that despite the fact that we were in academia, people are increasingly 
practical and policy oriented about what they want to see. They don't want to just have problems discussed in the abstract. They want to think about what can we really do to help give kids a better opportunity uh, rather than just you know write some research paper. <laughs> and so I think a lot you know a lot of the questions were about that kind of how do you exactly uh, you know flesh out these details and walk from what you see in the data to working with policymakers in the state house in city hall to really make a change to really help design policies that'll make things better. And as you just, that was my next question, how you approach it from a very micro level to a macro level. I mean, does this get up to sort of a, a federal standpoint? Because you talk about overall across the country, mm -hmm. this level of 50% achieve higher economic uh, success than their parents. I mean, is there, are there more factors at play than just that can be controlled at the, the city and state level? Yeah, so I think there's certainly can be helpful policies at all different levels. But what we find, which I think is incredibly important, but also intuitive, is that the types of things that we need here in Providence in order to help kids have more opportunity is not the same thing as maybe they need in Charlotte, North Carolina, or as they need in El Paso, Texas, right? All these places are, are kind of different and special in their own special ways. And so, you know, not that there's no relationship between different cities, mm. but what you really need is to take our data and then think about what's going on at a local level and talk to people in the community who have the best sense of exactly how these different neighborhoods differ. And it's that combination of what we see in the data combined with what people are seeing here on the ground, what policymakers are seeing, what community members are seeing that I think is really gonna make the difference. And there's so many areas that can uh, impact child development and success, you know, education, health, uh, parental economic success. Uh, you know, when you get this data and you see where some children are doing better than others. I mean, how do you begin to tackle, and it's pretty much up to policyholders, to, uh, makers to actually take a look at, but to say, what do we need to tweak to then get this child to be where another child is? Is it to look at where the success is and to try to emulate that, or is it to try to really focus on where that child is in that current area that they're at that point? Yeah, so I think that there are a number of different ways you can go about the problem. Um, one way is just to help families identify areas of the city where there is more opportunity. And the data show consistently that some areas are much, much higher opportunity than others, even within, within a city, from one neighborhood to another neighborhood in Providence. But then I think another aspect of it is just to help diagnose whatever the problem is at a much more specific level. And so, you know, you go to the doctor's office and you say, mm, kind of my leg is hurting. The whole point of what the doctor's trying to do is figure out in maybe a little bit more detail, is it at your knee, is it your tendon, is it your calf muscle, like what is exactly going on? And then once they figure that out, that's a big step forward to figuring out how they're gonna fix it. And I think that's very analogous to the way we think about the problem. Just saying there's no opportunity here is not specific enough. You need to figure out is the problem that you know kids aren't reaching high school with the academic preparation that they need to succeed? Is the problem that they are reaching high school with academic preparation, but they're not enrolling in college at the rates we think we should. And in what different groups are those two problems more prevalent? And that can help you, you know, think about whether we're working with, for instance, uh, children of immigrant families that face very different challenges than, than children of, of, uh, of, of native-born families. And I think it's, it's all about really understanding what is going on in detail in the problem in order to create a solution. So do you think you're, again, mentioning that 50% level, will this data help to turn that tide in your opinion, as you said, looking at generations past, being able to succeed their, uh, surpass their parents? I mean, do you, do you think this, this kind of critical 50% level that we're at, can that tip back in the favor of children? I think so. I think it's not only that data can help, but I think we're reaching a critical point in our country where this is something that an increasingly large number of people in all places across America, red states, blue states, urban places, rural places, really calling out that we've seen growing inequality. And in fact, that's what really accounts for much of the drop in this mobility rate over time. Is this the income stratification? Yeah, it's the fact that the income, you know, we're growing a little bit less fast as a country as a whole than we used to. Mm. But really the bigger problem is that a greater and greater share of that growth is accruing to a smaller and smaller number of people. And so I think it's exactly this problem of giving children from all different backgrounds opportunity. This can be a rising tide that lifts all boats. There's evidence that exposure to inventors and the type of thing that you can imagine schools and other opportunity programs doing helps create more inventors from groups in society that traditionally have not had people go on to, to play that role. So for, for women and for minorities, 
Uh, there's an estimate that we'd have four times more inventors in the country if only we had the same types of opportunities for those groups as we did uh, for, for white men. And so I think uh, this is really an amazing opportunity for us as a country to understand what's going on and to, uh, to make sure we drive it in a positive direction. So in a couple months' time, we'll have all that information from Dr. Friedman and his associates online to be able to peruse ourselves. So I'm clear, I'm sure that's the, that's the light at the end of the tunnel for you at this time. But being at Brown, what else is on your academic plate? Well, we have a, a master's in policy program that's actually oriented around big data. And so it's all about teaching students who have finished their uh, college degree but who want to go a little bit more de uh, in depth into to policy making and in particular to think about how one can use big data to help in policy making, uh, teach you the tools, get you set up uh, in the world. It's really a great opportunity. And so I, you know, teaching that program and spend a lot of time thinking about how to make that as practical and useful as it can be. And uh, we're so excited we'll be welcoming a new cohort of students in soon. So Very good. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come down because it looked like such an interesting talk up at Watson this week about how, just how big data could impact intergenerational mobility. Dr. Friedman, I appreciate your taking the time to come down. I very much look forward to seeing this data in a couple months' time. Hopefully, we'll have you back in Absolutely. the studio. Okay, Dr. So nice Friedman, thanks so much. I'll let you go around the corner. Dr. John Friedman, Associate Professor of Economics and International and Public Affairs at Brown, just gave a talk this week, Opportunity America, how big data can impact intergenerational mobility talking about how a final product will be put out in a couple months' time, showing all this data collected and how it could potentially be of a resource to policymakers as they look at how to improve the outcomes for children across the country. So we appreciate your taking the time to tune in to Go Local Live this Friday. We had a very full show for you. 3 o'clock, Molly O'Brien. 4 o'clock, Youth Was Served. Ben Kinch down at Washington, D.C. following URI's win. Keeping an eye on the game right now taking place, George Mason, St. Joe's could be over. I don't have my score sheet up on my phone. But tomorrow, 1 o'clock, semifinals for the A-10. So appreciate your tuning in. Be sure to tune in to Go Local this weekend for more coverage on sports, news, politics, lifestyle, and more. We look forward to seeing you next Monday back here in studio with Molly O'Brien, CEO Josh Fenton at the 4 o'clock hour for Business Monday. So everyone have a good weekend. Thank you again for watching. We appreciate your feedback. We look forward to seeing you next week. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel.